Hello students, I'm Dr. Basenberg and welcome to Drugs in American Society. Uh, this semester we're going to be entirely online uh, due to our current pandemic. So my plan is to record all of my lectures in advance and then on Wednesdays during our group discussion I'll be available for questions. So normally my office would be in Hearst 204, but of course we're not going to campus this semester. So the best way to reach me is by email. Um, I'll be checking my email a lot more than usual. So please send me an email with any questions that you might have. So, I'm very excited to be teaching this course this semester. Um, I think it's really important that we talk about drugs, uh, and it's also very fun to talk about drugs, and it's also very sociological. So the goal of this class is not just to talk about what the drugs are and what they do, but really to talk about who does the drugs and why we care. Uh, the premise of the class is really that everyone is on drugs. Um, Americans love drugs. We're all on some sort of drug. Uh, but the question is, how do we feel about that? Um, who do we think does drugs? Who do we think does which drugs? Um, why are some drugs illegal and some drugs aren't? Why do we sometimes change which drugs are illegal and which ones aren't? Um, do we think that there's a class issue, a gender issue, a race issue? Um, and so in a lot of ways, drugs are not about biology at all. They're very much about sociology. So in this class, uh, we're going to go through sort of each drug each week um, and think about the way that who uses the drug and how we feel about it is entirely sociological. So there's going to be two main drugs that we're going to talk about, um, which is primarily marijuana because it's been changing hugely in America in the last couple decades, um, and opiates uh, because they've had a massive, massive impact on the American population. So we have two books. The first is called Marijuana, A Short History. Um, and it is pretty short. This is kind of a, a little one. Um, the second book that we're going to read is called Dreamland, um, and this one's a little bit bigger. This one's kind of a chunk, um, but Dreamland is very, very good. It's it's nonfiction uh, and it's incredibly engaging. So hopefully it won't be too cut too scary. But that is a lot of reading uh, for eight weeks. So buckle up, get your reading pants on. So the format of this course is going to be a little bit unusual since we're doing it online. So my plan is that the vast majority of it will be asynchronous um, so that you can do it according to your own schedule. So the only thing that you'll have to be present for all of you at the same time is discussion. Um, the rest of it is essentially up to you. So the video lectures will be uploaded every Monday hopefully. Um, the video chats will be every Wednesday, and every Wednesday you'll have one of your weekly discussions due. Um, other than that, the reading and the watching of films can be done entirely on your own schedule. So the way that I've designed the course is that each week we'll talk about a different drug, and each week we will have um, a lecture and a film or a lecture and a book. Um, so the two books that we're going to talk about are about marijuana and opiates, so there aren't movies about those, but every other drug has a movie involved. Um, because I thought since we're going to be online and since we're all watching a lot of movies anyway, why not? You know, it's kind of an unusual semester, so I wanted to incorporate more films. So the films will be available on Moodle or on Netflix. Um, you know, we did that survey and it turns out all of you have Netflix. If you don't, please let me know. Um, so if you look at the Moodle page, it will either have a link to the film, which will be on Swank, which is paid for by Oglethorpe, um, or it'll have just sort of a reminder to go watch it on Netflix or on YouTube. So the course is set up for you to do almost all of it on your own time, and then there'll be very specific due dates for when you'll turn things in on Moodle. So, um, your grade is mostly going to be based on writing. It's a very writing intensive course. Um, there will be two papers and there will be two book reviews. We'll talk more about what those are as we go through, but basically there will be a paper due essentially at the beginning and a paper due about three quarters of the way through, and then there will be a book report, or a book uh, reflection, um, due halfway through and another one due at the very end. Um, there's also room in the grade for attendance, but we'll talk about that as we go. Um, not all of you have the right kind of internet to do the uh, weekly video chats, so I don't want to punish anybody for not having good internet, so we'll figure that out. But in the section um, about the 10% that's for attendance, that'll be based on our weekly video chats. So the majority of your grade is based on reading and writing um, and telling me about it. The next few sections of the syllabus are mostly boilerplate, but I want to go over them just in case. So you can turn in late assignments, but for every 24 hour block of time after it's late, it'll be 10 points off. So if the paper is due at midnight and you turn it in at 1 a.m., 10 points off. 
you cannot turn in late media posts um, because it's just going to be too late for that. It's such a short semester uh, that I really want to encourage you to have things in on time because you're going to miss things if you don't do that. In regard to classroom environment, we don't have a classroom, um, so that should be no problem. Uh, you can eat and drink whatever you want and wear whatever you want. When we come to the weekly discussions, uh, there's a few things that I would like for you to keep in mind. Um, I'd like for you to be, number one, um, respectful. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things that tend to be difficult and they tend to be emotional. Um, and one of the major things that I want you to keep in mind is that the things that your classmates are saying might be difficult for them and might be intensely personal. So I would like for you to be very respectful of the things that we discuss uh, in our weekly discussions. And the other thing is confidentiality. Uh, we will be talking about drugs. So if one of your classmates says something uh, that might indicate illegal behavior, um, let's keep that in the Zoom. Uh, that's not something that we need to be spreading around. So generally speaking, um, in regard to the video discussions, I would like for you to be on time and mentally present and awake. And this is one that I never get to say in classes. I would like for you to be sober. I know we're talking about drugs, but uh, it won't help if you're on drugs while we talk about drugs. So try to maintain a pretty good base level of sobriety. The rest of it is really boilerplate from Oglethorpe. Um, there's a policy on incompletes. There's several pages about the honor code. I'm sure you're familiar with the honor code. Please try not to cheat. I have to do a lot of paperwork. The next section um, is the, probably the most, so the page that says semester schedule might be the most important page. So if you look at it, you can see that each drug has its own week, and over the course of each week, um, we will have a topic about which we are learning, possibly a book, and possibly a film. Um, I've also included a fifth column that'll show you what's due that week in case that something is. So for instance, for the first week, um, we'll talk about the syllabus, and then we'll also talk about two of our favorite and most popular drugs, caffeine and sugar. So essentially, we're starting with the light drugs and working our way down to the heavy drugs. Um, the next week, which will be June 8th through 12th, we're going to talk about tobacco. And more specifically, we're going to talk about nicotine. So we're going to talk not just about cigarettes, but also about vaping, uh, because vaping has become a huge thing in America and worldwide, of course. So that week, um, we'll have the normal lecture, and then we're going to watch a documentary on YouTube called Vape Life. The next week, uh, June 15th through 19th, we'll talk about alcohol, a very popular drug as well. Um, so alcohol is one of the great drugs to talk about in terms of how we feel about a drug. Um, you know, the prohibition was a great example of making something illegal but not making something unpopular. Um, and it's also a great example of changing our minds. Uh, we do this all the time. We like a drug, we hate a drug, we change our minds. So in the section on alcohol, we have another documentary. Um, that one's called Risky Drinking, and it's about, um, I think, realizing the extent to which use can transition into abuse. So it's a, in a lot of ways about alcoholism and the way that it goes unnoticed, especially among young adults, because drinking is such a big part of our culture. So the link to that one is available on Moodle. It's part of our swank. The next week, we'll talk about marijuana which is such a great sociological thing uh, to discuss. So that's the week that you will um, have to read and report about your book. So that's the, the week we're going to read Marijuana, A Short History. Um, and you will turn in your book reflection that week, um, and the book reflection will be due on the 24th. So normally things will be due on Wednesdays, but the papers will be due on Fridays at midnight to give you a little bit of extra time. The next week, um, we don't have any class. This is the first time in a summer semester that we've had a break in the middle. Um, it's mostly for the July 4th holiday, but also because we just needed that. So that week you can do whatever you want. The next week when we come back, um, we are going to talk about Ritalin and Adderall. So stimulants have had a long history um, of, a, of, of use among all different kinds of humans. Um, but our most current issue with that, especially in American society, is the prescribing and overprescribing um, of Ritalin and Adderall to young people. Um, so it's a very popular drug right now, a really popular study drug. So that week, uh, we will watch another documentary on Netflix called Take Your Pills. It's excellent. The next week, July 13th through 17th, we're going to talk about crack and cocaine. 
So this one is also extremely sociological because the two drugs are essentially the same, but the way that we think of them is vastly different and the way that we punish them is vastly different and who we think is doing those drugs is vastly different. So that's one of my favorite topics. Um, and so that week we're gonna watch a really weird movie uh, that actually takes place here in Atlanta. It's supposed to be a documentary, it's clearly not, and it's called Snow on the Bluff. Uh, and it's about a guy who's a drug dealer in the Bluffs, uh, which is in West Atlanta. So it's a very um, sort of hometown movie. And I think a really good way of thinking about the way that drugs can infiltrate somebody's life to the extent that they are controlling every, every day. That week, um, your second paper will be due. The next week, we'll talk about meth. Uh, so methamphetamines, again, a long history. And technically, Ritalin and Adderall are methamphetamines. But that week, what we're going to talk about is meth as um, an entirely separate drug, um, and especially meth as a social problem. So meth is sort of on the decline right now because heroin is on the rise. Uh, but it still had a massive impact in American society in the last decade or two. So I haven't decided which documentary we're going to watch that week or which movie, maybe. Um, because there's actually a lot of good ones, but I'll let you know in time. And then the final week, July 27th through 31st, we'll talk about opioids. Um, so opioids are probably our most pressing drug issue right now in America. Um, opioids are just incredibly deadly. We're losing probably about 200, uh, maybe 250 Americans a day to opioid overdoses. And so it's a, it's a shockingly powerful and problematic drug. Um, and that's the week that we will talk about this book, Dreamland. So that week, um, your book response will be due and we'll talk about opioids. And that will be the end of the semester. So I would recommend keeping an eye on this um, semester schedule. I actually printed mine out and like taped it above my desk because it's an easy way to visualize what's coming and what's going to be due soon. Okay, let's move into the appendices. Um, so appendix one is about your papers. And the papers are essentially separate from the class. Um, the papers are not specifically about any of the drugs we're talking about. You don't need to have gone through the class in order to write the papers. So if you have a complicated semester ahead of you, you could write the papers in advance, uh, or you could write the papers at any point according to your own schedule. So keep an eye on the prompts, which we'll talk about in a second. So overall, the papers are pretty short, uh, five or six pages, which is about 1,500 words, although I do always accept longer papers. Um, they should be like every other paper that you write, 12-point font, one-inch margins, etc., etc. Um, you can turn them in on Moodle, and then I will leave your responses on Moodle. Um, I leave a lot of responses. I'm actually kind of a slow grader because I read all the things and write long responses. Um, so keep an eye on the responses that I leave you on Moodle, because part of that will be about how to improve for next time, and part of that is just how much I like your paper. Um, so the papers themselves are going to be due at midnight, or technically 11.59 because Moodle, um, and they will be graded on a scale of 1 to 100, like a normal paper. So your first paper is due June 10th, and your second paper is due July 15th. Um, so let's talk about the first paper. The prompt for the first paper is available online, it's on Moodle, um, and you should be able to find it relatively easily. So your first paper um, is about you. Uh, this is, can be kind of a tricky one to write, but basically the first paper is about your experience with drugs. Um, and what I really want you to think about for this paper is not necessarily choices that you made, but options that you had. The first paper is about the presence of drugs in your life. So if you look at the prompt, um, it's really very much about your personal relationship, but it's much more sociological than that. So what I want you to do is go through these questions, and you don't have to answer all of them, and you don't have to answer them in order, but I do want you to think about them. So the first thing that I want you to think about in regard to drugs in your life um, is how the, our favorite things in sociology might have impacted you, which is race, class, and gender. Um, so in that way, do you think that your race has impacted your exposure to drugs? Has your gender impacted your exposure? Um, has your social class impacted your exposure? Because, you know, you may see different drugs at different parties depending on, you know, where it's being hosted and by whom. Um, I want you to think about the presence of drugs in your environment. Did you see people doing drugs when you were little? Uh, were people selling drugs outside your house? Um, were people offering you drugs in school or when you were little? It's, it's hard, I think, for us to back up and look at our own lives objectively, but this is a, a good experience in doing that. Um, 
one of the things that you know I, I often think about is, for instance, I've never done meth, uh, but that's not because I have some overwhelming moral you know strength. It's because I've literally never been offered meth. <laughs> like I, I don't think I would do it at this point, but it's not like um, I am refusing to do meth and it's everywhere in my life. Uh, it's just never been a, been an option. So one of the things that I want you to think about is what has been an option for you? Have you never done any drugs because you've never been in a place to do drugs? Have you done all of the drugs because everybody told you to? Like what I want you to think about is it, what options you had. Um, so it's very much about your environment, and I do want you to also consider the medical aspect of drugs. Um, have you ever been prescribed a controlled substance? You know, maybe you had a surgery and they gave you hard drugs. Um, has anybody in your family been prescribed a controlled substance? That's one of the main ways that we see addiction arising these days, is that people are prescribed painkillers after a major surgery, and then they develop a quick addiction, and then it becomes a real problem. So I do want you to consider the presence of legal medical drugs as well. So again, the goal for this paper is to think about what is present in your life, uh, what is present for the people around you, uh, what you've been exposed to. And so I want you to think very carefully about your history with drugs in regard to not just your choices, but your social world. And the other thing that I want to be very clear about um, is that no one will see this except for me. So you don't have to tell me anything that you don't want to tell me, um, but there's a complete confidentiality. Uh, no one else will ever see this. So if you um, have done some pretty hard drugs, if you've done some jail time, if you are an active drug dealer, I am not going to turn you in. Um, in previous semesters, I have seen a lot. Um, so I have never turned anyone in and I'm not going to start. Uh, so please don't worry uh, about admitting to especially very minor drug use. The second paper is also kind of personal, uh, but it's personal for someone else. So in the second paper, I want you to interview a drug addict. Um, and this one can be very tricky because a lot of people who we would consider to be addicted do not consider themselves to be addicted. So you do need to approach this with some delicacy and with some grace. But what I would like for you to do is interview anybody in your life uh, about their drug use and then to think critically especially about how their circumstances differ from your circumstances. So if you are interviewing um, you know an addict who is now homeless and on the streets how did they get there and how did you not get there? You know is one of the most important questions. If you are interviewing your own sibling you might have a better idea of what might have uh, occurred in regard to environment but if you're interviewing a stranger I want you to think about that very carefully. So um, step one, find a person who you believe to be an addict and get them to uh, agree to an interview. Um, but step two, there are some questions here that, again, I would like for you to consider but not necessarily answer in order. Um, again, race, class, gender, that's our favorite thing. Um, exposure to drugs, also exposure to drug users. Addiction tends to run in families uh, for two reasons. We'll talk about this extensively. Um, and one is, of course, the genetic component, but the other is the social component. Um, if you come from a family that makes their entire living by selling crack, the likelihood that you will do crack, very high. Um, if you come from a family that drinks a cocktail every night at 5 o'clock, the likelihood that you will commence drinking very high. So the exposure that you have to the drug is so important, so be mindful of asking that in the interview. Um, I'd also like for you to ask about their ability to afford drugs. Uh, very often the drug that we do is based on what we can afford. Um, their ability to afford treatment. Has the person that you're talking to gone to rehab? Have they gone to therapy? Have they gone to jail? Um, do they have stabilizing factors? One of the main things that we have found that prevents addiction um, or that allows people to overcome addiction is stabilizing factors like a job or a family or a church. Um, something to look forward to and something to lean on is a, just so important uh, for recovering from addiction. Um, and of course, this is the most delicate part, but very often in uh, drug abuse, we see a previous exposure to trauma. So often people who experience traumatic things, especially as children, self-medicate with drugs and alcohol. And so they end up self-medicating to an extent that it becomes a problem. So if you feel comfortable, I think that's worth addressing with your, with your interview subject. If not, um, please follow the lead of the person that you're interviewing. Um, this is not about making anyone else uncomfortable. This is just about giving you an, an idea of what someone else's exposure to drugs might look like and how 
addiction can occur even among you know people that you thought you knew down to their bones. So for this paper, you can interview somebody you know well, um, and in our current circumstances, you might have to. Um, but bear in mind that you might have to look at their life in a different way. Uh, you might have to look more objectively than you're used to. So this paper also completely confidential. You don't have to tell me the person's name. Um, you can you know use a pseudonym. I don't mind at all. So again. The first paper, you. The second paper, someone else. But you'll be addressing a lot of the same questions. Okay. The next appendix is about your book reflections. So this one is about what you're going to turn in um, after you finish reading your book. So these are not book reports. Um, I have read the book. I know what's in it. Um, what I'm interested in is your thoughts on specific questions about the book. So the prompts for the book reflections will be re re um, released and put on Moodle way in advance. Um, the prompts for the first book reflection are already up. So the book reflections are about the same in terms of length as their papers. They'll be about five or six pages, about 1,500 words, um, and they'll be due on Moodle, they'll be due at midnight. So all of that is consistent to at least help you keep some consistency in your semester even though we're online. Um, your first book reflection will be due June 24th, and your second book reflection will be due July 29th, the last day. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the first book reflection since the prompt is already up, and you can kind of do it whenever you want. Um, your first book reflection is about marijuana, a short history. And total, it should be several pages because I want you to dedicate about 300 words um, to, to each question. There are five questions and some of them are more personal and some of them are more factual. So for instance, the first question is about what does the classification of marijuana as a schedule one drug have to do with race? It's a big question. You'll find the answer in the book, of course. Um, and so in a sense, what I'm looking for in the book reflections is evidence that you read the book. That's important. Evidence that you understood the book important, um, but also evidence that you can take what you've learned from the book and apply it to other situations. So the first question is very much a test of like, okay, but did you understand this? Um, but from there, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, so the second question is about how the our current debate regarding legalization of marijuana has been shaped very much by race and class and gender. Um, the third question is much more personal. It's about if you were making the laws regarding marijuana in Georgia, what you would do. Um, I'm very interested in what you think, but in that one, I want you to use at least two examples that have already been tried. Um, whether they worked or didn't work is, is whatever, but I would like for you to use those two examples to show that you're aware of the history and you're aware of uh, things that are working and, and things that are only resulting in more jail time. The fourth question is entirely personal. Um, it's about what you think would happen if you offered to smoke a joint with your mother. Um, so in this question, I'm interested in, again, your lived experience and also your mother's lived experience. But the point of the question is for you to address um, how your mother's social situation might impact her decisions and her feelings on, on specific drugs. The fifth question um, is about how we have changed our minds about marijuana over the course of the last couple hundred years and especially the last couple decades. Um, and what I want here is for you to reflect on our very right now situation. How do you think um, COVID and quarantine and everybody staying at home all day is going to impact our feelings on marijuana? Um, so for instance, right now in Colorado, it is legal to buy marijuana. It is illegal to get a haircut. These are weird times. Um, the questions for the second book reflection will be available soon. I haven't quite finished them, um, but trust me, they'll be out before. The final appendix is about your weekly media posts. So this is one of my favorite assignments because I get exposed to so many things I wouldn't have known about otherwise. Um, but the goal for this assignment is that you will find a piece of media that is related to the drug that we're talking about that week. Um, and it can be any piece of media. Um, it can be something from the news, from Instagram, uh, from crazy conspiracy theories you got forwarded. Um, you know, it could be from TikTok. I'm still unfamiliar with TikTok, but I understand it's very popular. Um, basically, any reference to the drug that we're talking about that week. And what I want you to do is not just include the link so that I can watch it, um, but I want you to include some thought about that. So here are the questions that I want you to answer about your link itself. Number one, where did you get this link? Um, and that's not just, you know, did you get it from Instagram? That's more 
about where did you get it in terms of is this a valid source? Um, can it be trusted? Like is this a video about how nicotine isn't harmful that's been sponsored by the Tobacco Association? Because that's worth knowing. Um, is this a, a video about how marijuana will kill you but it's from Mothers Against Drugs? That's important. So I want you to tell me not just where it's from but whether that's a viable source, a trustable source. The second part, who is the intended audience for your clip? Um, is your clip meant to scare people? Is it meant to glorify the drug? Um, is it meant for everybody? Is it meant for a very narrow audience? I want you to think about are they telling people what they want to hear? Um, or are they directing this very specifically? That kind of thing is, is very crucial for critical thinking. Like who is the audience? The third question is about how are we, as the audience, supposed to feel about the drug in question? Um, does the the way that the drug is portrayed make it look fun, dangerous, uh, valuable, uh, deadly. Uh, basically I want you to think about the way that the drug itself is being portrayed and whether there's um, like sort of a vested interest in, in whether they want us to think a certain way about the drug. And the final question um, is about who is shown using the drug. Um, again, this one gets very much at, at class and gender. Um, this one is about whether there's an association with a certain kind of person. So, for instance, if you're watching, um, you know, like The Wolf of Wall Street and they're sort of glorifying the use of cocaine, or if you're watching uh, Requiem for a Dream and they're being very clear about what happens when you do the wrong drugs. You know what I mean? So essentially, are we supposed to admire the people using the drug? Is this people on a yacht drinking champagne? Or are we supposed to judge the people using the drug? Is this, you know, homeless alcoholics on the street? So that's a very important part in regard to how we feel about drugs. So I want you to very carefully consider who is shown using the drug and why. So the media posts are not, you know, particularly long. They should be like at least 200 words, maybe 300, although again, I will always read longer ones. Um, and I do want you to include a link, but do please warn me if the link includes um, anything aggressive or loud or nudity, that's fine. There can be like any, any amount of X-rated material. I just need to know before I put it on my speakers. Um, so just find it anywhere you find it. Tell me all about it. Uh, and this is designed to help you think about the presence of drugs in the media and especially how we develop our ideas about drugs based on what we see in the media. So I'm really looking forward to this one um, because I'm, I'm very interested in what's in your world that's not in my world. Okay, that wraps up our explanation of the syllabus. Please email me if you have questions. Um, I'll be available. I'm not doing anything else. So I'm really looking forward to the semester. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and I'm pretty